Young Muslims, wherever you are, in the shadow of the sun, or by the light of a star, your supreme protector is Almighty Allah. Go forward, young Muslims, wherever you are. Go forward, young Muslims, whoever you are. Press forward and forward to the light of Allah, and repeat and repeat, Alhamdulillah. Go forward, young Muslims, whoever you are. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our program, Teens and Parents. I am your host, Bilal Abdul Kareem. And I have here on my right, Hamza Abdul Kareem. He's not my son, but, you know, I have a closeness to him. We've got the same last name. And also, we have Jabba Muslim here. And we're continuing um, our discussion, getting closer to one's parents. Hamza. You made mention, a very important point, about you know, respect and the parents and the children having respect for one another. So my question to you still stands as we started before the break. What happens from the point where the child is offered the cigarette and those few milliseconds or maybe one second or two seconds where he's got to make a decision? If he does not have a good relationship with his parents... Does that affect that particular decision? Yes, of course it affects it. If the parent hasn't stopped the son or daughter from smoking before and hasn't talked to them about it, he won't think it's bad. He'll think it's a normal thing, for therefore he will try the cigarette. Time out. But I'm speaking from an aspect that he has been warned, you know, that cigarette smoking is a bad thing. So he's clear. He's clear on what the parents want. So I'm speaking about, he knows what the parents want. Parent is not there. Now it's time for him to choose his own path. If he doesn't have a good relationship with his parents, mm -hmm. will the, what the, the parent wants play a role? If, it, if, he's not, if he's not close to the parents, then therefore he will do what he wants. He's like, ah, who cares? They, they're just my parents. They're old people. People these days, they, don't, they think their parents are old. They don't know what's going on, and they're old. They don't know nothing. So he, for therefore, he will do as he likes. Okay. Jabba, what do you think about all this? It's, uh, <clears throat> for me, it's, uh, it's an eye-opener, you know, listening to Hamza. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm kind of speechless because, you know, like you, we were saying earlier, uh, we're trying to keep that communication and that's very, very important. And from listening to him, um, it seems that sometimes what we do, um, we don't give them a certain respect that they want. And that's what, that's what I'm seeing. They, they want a certain respect. And you will get that respect, I say. Uh, like my dad used to say, you will get that respect until you earn it. So once you earn that respect, I'll give you that respect. Once you try to uh, do responsible things, then you won't, it, uh, it won't allow me to have to holler at you. But like, um, what I'm learning now is that really um, it's important for me because a lot of times you can't get your point across hollering because it's the, that's another barrier. So I think from what he's saying is that uh, you have to communicate. Like, you know, just communicate, sit down, and allow the child to feel free to always come to you and be... Um, to be a friend, to be a father, to, you know, uh, and that's how I really see it. Okay. Is, is that the case, Hamza, what he made mention about screaming and hollering? Does that show the seriousness of the father? Is it beneficial sometimes to be yelled at? What do yes, you think? Yes, I think it's beneficial. For some, for some kids, they, this, getting scared of parents helps a lot. Because if he's not scared of his parents and he doesn't get shouted, he'll do whatever he wants because he knows even if the father finds out that he smokes, he won't do nothing. He thinks, ah, I'm going to go, he's just going to give me a lecture and forget it, that's all. But if he knows he's going to get shouted and he might even get beat, oh, no, if I do this, my dad's going to find out. He's going to smell me when I come home. Uh, I'm not going to do this. Okay, but now, I, 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 mm. um, for me, um, what I try to do with my, and my kid, he's only six, but... First, what I, I, I say to him, Allah sees you. So no matter what you do or, or what I say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees you. So I don't want him to fear me. 
of course, they're going to have a sense of fear of me, but I want them to fear the Creator because what you're doing is against our way of life. So no, don't fear me, fear your Lord. Because once you get, when I was telling Hamza earlier, in the States, we uh, believe that once you get to the age of 18, now we can just get what we say, buck wild. Mm -hmm. We can just do what we want. But as Muslims, we understand once you come to the age of puberty, you become responsible. Now you become responsible to what? To pray, to do this, to do that. And see, I think that if we kind of hopefully put that in our children, don't fear me, even though you're going to have a sense of fear of the parent. But most, uh, most of all, fear the Creator because He sees everything. Okay, but Jabber, let's talk about fear versus respect. Now, Hamza, mm -hmm. you made mention about he's afraid of what his parents' reaction is going to be. He's afraid he will get yelled at. He's afraid he may get hit. But let's look at it from another aspect. There's a respect factor, meaning I wouldn't want my father or my mother to see me smoking a cigarette because they would be so disappointed in me. As opposed to the fact that I don't want my mother and father to see me smoking a cigarette because he will hit me. You, do you notice the difference between yeah. the two? For example, if, if my parents had trust in me, they, if I asked them if they're going out and I wanted to have a party at home, for example, they would let me, if I wanted to have friends over, eat pizza, watch a game, but if they never trusted me, they'll think that we're going to smoke in the house, do something wrong, anything can happen. For Therefore, if, I, if they had trust in me and respect, they, they would let me do anything I want. Okay, let's look at this two sides of the coin. We want to talk about respect for a second. Jabber, what would inspire and instill respect in you from the actions of your son or your daughter? What would they do that would show you, hey, you know what? I respect and I trust this little boy or young girl or what have you. Listening. Listen. <laughs> listening. Guess, yeah, I guess I would say listen, mm -hmm. you know, to, uh, to my advice. And um, that's what I pretty much listen. And then watch, uh, I watch how they live and the things that they do, um, then that will earn their respect from me. Mm -hmm. Does but, listen to your advice entail actually doing what you've said or just considering it? Oh, doing what I said. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. That inspires the respect. Okay. Hamza, what would you want to see from your parents that would inspire respect in your heart for them? First of all, if they fully trusted me, I'd respect them. I respect whatever they said to me. But if you don't get trusted, you don't care what they're going to say. Like, anyway, even if I do it or don't do it, they don't care. The idea of me won't change. They always think I'm bad. I'm doing it. But if, they, if you know that your parents think good of you, you always do good and you won't try to do anything bad or try anything bad. Okay. Um, but what happens? Things happen. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to uh, uh, take the garbage out. Take the garbage out. Yeah. You failed to do so. You were wrong. Okay? So then they get upset. How does it work when the trust dwindles due to the actions of the child? How does that work? First of all, you know, if they see that I feel hurt, that I made a mistake, they might give me another chance another chance to see if, that, if I'm respectable and I deserve the respect that they gave me before. But if, if they see that I don't care that when I made a mistake and they, and they see that I don't care that I made a mistake or not, so therefore they won't trust me again. So second chance, as I said, may mention about being allowed to make a mistake. You understand the point? Yeah. Is that, the, is that the need? Uh -huh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not being allowed to make a mistake. To see if the parents see that they gave him another chance. If they see that nothing changes and he's still bad. So therefore, they won't trust him again or give him no respect and give him no rights around the house. But if they see that he changed, he acts like a good person, he acts mature as his age, so therefore they'll trust him and he deserves another chance. Okay, now we're going to go to a break. And Jabber, I'm going to ask you um, a question. <laughs> Should I sting you with it now so you get a minute to think know. about it? it? Uh, as you like. No, I'm not going to do it like that. I'm not going to ask him anything right now. Leave him on the hot seat. We'll be right back, inshallah.
Go forward, young Muslims, wherever you are, in the shadow of the sun or by the light of a star. A lot of parents don't put much... Uh, they, they, they put... How can I say this? They believe that because of their child's uh, role in school, everything is taken care of. Right. And I've seen this with my own eyes, by the way. I've seen this happen a lot of times with a lot of folks, and their parents don't put much focus into them into their lives, into their personal lives. They put more focus into the basics. In the current times, I think that that's not what's so. I think that young people are very unique. Young people are very intelligent. Um, young people are maturing, maturing at a faster pace. And that when they engage authority figures, the assumption that the respect is there based upon them being an authority figure is not there. It has to be an earned respect from young people. Go forward, young Muslims, wherever you are, in the shadow of the sun or by the light of a star. The true life of the Muslim starts at death. If you wish to enhance your knowledge of the Islamic perspective on the hereafter, this life doesn't go on forever, but we do so little to prepare for it because most of us don't know what happens after this life ends. If you want to be amongst those who know, then join us every Saturday at 1930 GMT for the inevitable journey. Muslims, wherever you are, in the shadow of the sun or by the light of a star. Welcome back. And we are now continuing with our topic of getting closer to one's parents. Now, we're going to continue. Jabra, I've got a question for you. And it's real simple. Okay. And it's not so easy. Jabra, what do you want from your children? What do you want to see? What do I want them to see? No. What I want to What see. do you want to see? What do I want to see? No. Um, a well respected and um, God fearing child. That's what I, I, I pray for, a God fearing child. And um, that's pretty much uh, sums it up a respected, God fearing child. That's what you want. Yes. In a long term goal. Yes. This is a good thing. Yes. But what about the day to day, short term goals? What do you want from your children also? Well, uh, I think most of all, I would like for them to be responsible, you know, to, to be responsible, to have goals themselves, you know, and to plan, you know, for what you want to do in life. You know, like Hamza, he's 15. So now, when he's, now is the time to really start to talk to him about, you know, what is his plans for the next four, five, ten years, what he wants to do in life. So that's pretty much short-term goal that what I'm, um, I'm looking for. Hamza, you're a teenager. What do you want from your parents? What do I want from my parents? What do you want from them? From my parents, I want trust and respect and reliability. First of all, I want trust so they can trust me to do as much as I like. Not as much as I like in a bad way, but as much as I like to give me freedom to do what I want mm -hmm. and, and, and respect so they can respect me and respect my ideas. For example, if we're, if we're discussing anything, I respect my idea as if I'm a grown-up and my ability so they can rely on me to, for example, if I want to have friends over anything so they can rely on me, oh, it's Hamza, uh, we can trust him. He's done it before. He'll do it well this time. He won't do anything wrong in the house. That's the only three things I want from my family. Okay, l let us talk about uh, trust and perception of trust. Mm -hmm. Let us say... Um, traditionally, I think even you can understand, teenagers sometimes feel invincible, mm. that no harm can come to them, and things are always going to turn out okay. Teenagers generally think like that. I, I think, you know, yeah. I, I think Jab and I are in agreement with that. I don't know if you are. But here's the question. You want to be respected. Okay, this is a good thing, and you want to be trusted. But let's say that the child or the teenager comes to the parents and says, I want to go to such and such's house because they're having a party. The parents know that so-and-so is not a very good young man. And then the child says, but I want to go. 
don't you trust me? And they say, no, I'm sorry, son, but you can't go. Now, understand what's happening here. The child thinks that they don't trust him. They don't trust mm -hmm. him. But the issue is not that they don't trust That's you. It's that, that the kid is bad, the other kid is going to just party. They see something that you don't see. Mm -hmm. You as a teenager, do you have enough uh, maturity to say, hey, maybe my parents know something that I don't know. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to let them decide and I will be submissive to it and I won't think that they don't trust me. No. People might just think, uh, they're getting to me. I've done something wrong. That's why they're trying to do this to me. They're trying to be, they're, they're trying, they're trying to be mean to me. That's why they're, letting me, they're not letting me go. I would never think that my parents are thinking of a good side. I'm thinking, what can happen if he goes to that party? What can happen? A fight or anything can happen. Mm -hmm. We'll never think of that. Okay, so then um, how would the parent be able to say no to the child without the child thinking negatively uh, right. that, you know, there's no... Trust in by yourself. saying no, by just saying no, the child will think, oh, I know why he's doing this to me. I've done something bad. But if he explains to him why mm -hmm. he's not letting him go and the reasons, the, the child will understand. You think so, huh? Mm -hmm. You That's think the I child think so. will understand? I don't know. Because uh, sometimes I think uh, some will and some won't. You know, uh, and not, I think not that they wouldn't understand. It's like you said, the trust factor, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I'm not, but the parent knows that it has an assumption that that party isn't good. But you say, no, Baba, I, I'm, I know I, I'm, I'm not going to get in any trouble. But I see something you don't see. Mm -hmm. The same thing my parents told me, you know. Like now, when I was his age, I thought I knew it all. You know, you couldn't tell you guys are old, you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But now today, now today, when I was telling him before, I said, now today, I should have listened to what my parents said because they were right. But when you're at that age sometimes, even though you're talking about the trust factor, the respect and all of this, but you still as a child, as a, you know, a teenager, you're like, well, they don't know what's going on. But I should have listened. I should have listened too. Do you believe in your heart that your parents are wiser than you Some, as teens? No. I think I know, I know nearly every, as much as they know. See? You see? See, it, that's what I'm saying. No, but, you know, may Allah reward you for your honesty <laughs> I mean. because that's honest. Yes, that's mm -hmm. very honest. You see? And so, so, therefore, when you feel that you have as much information as they have and they have refused you, it's difficult for to get that in, it, right. to understand it. it, it exactly. Mm -hmm. But the, the point that I'm but trying. But how to, are you going to respect the parent if you think that you're as wiser than them? Uh, that you're, you're wise. That the child is wiser than the dad. You, you know, even though if the dad is. Uh, I, I'd actually like for you to direct that question to Hamza. Maybe mm -hmm. he could answer. Right. That I mean, more. even if the dad is, he's not educated. He doesn't have any academic education. Mm -hmm. Okay, but still, he has experience in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but what makes the child think that because maybe he a blue collar driver or something like this or whatever that uh, he's not a white a white collar worker? What makes the child think that uh, he's more intelligent than the parent? Yeah, usually they think that they're not intelligent because they're old enough. That's the rest of them number one. They think uh -huh. they're old enough that they know as much as the parent knows. I'm not kid no more. I'm not ten or eleven. I'm fifteen, sixteen, or seventeen. So they think that they know as much as the parents. Yes, yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. I see. You see, this is why this is beneficial. Right. I mean, for us. Absolutely. You see, because I'm I'm trying to see into your world. Right. I want to understand you because I want to say that I love you, mm -hmm. and I want to be a partner with you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to become opposed to you, and we create a power struggle. Right. You, you, you understand yeah, yeah, the I point? Get, right. Yeah, I get you. So it, it seems that now we've come to the real heart of the matter. The heart of the matter here is going right back to one thing, trust. If the young man or young woman does not have trust for the parent, mm -hmm. they will feel that I know what they know. They don't agree with me, which means that they don't understand, and I do, because there's no trust. But 
if there is trust, then the child would say, you know what? I should have been allowed to go to that party. I really believe that. But Pop obviously must know something I don't know. So, okay, I'll sit here and we'll watch the baseball game together or the soccer game, as mm. you may mention. Yes. Is that valid? That's valid, but people, people these days are reminded they don't think that way. They don't think that far. But for me, I know if, if my father tells me not to do something, but when I get older, maybe his age, maybe even younger by a bit, so, uh, I remember that day when my dad told me not to do that. I know, I know exactly why he, not, he told me not to do that, and I'll thank him. Okay, but we're talking about current. Because mm -hmm. many times we will get older and we will say, wow, I ruined my relationship with my mother or with my father. If only I would have done such and such a thing at that time. We have to begin to wrap up this session, but I need you to answer this question for me, Hamza. Mm. For, at the current moment, people my age don't think that way. Should they think that way? They should, but they don't. Is it a sign of maturity to think that way? To, to think that way is a sign of maturity, but they're not mature. They're yes. not mature enough to think of that. Um, we have to wrap this up. But I've got to ask you guys to come back again for uh, a future episode because um, I think that we've made some serious progress here. But I think that th there's still some more underneath the surface that we need to try to get to. But we've got to wrap it up right now because they won't let me talk for two hours. <laughs> Even if I ask nicely, they'll refuse me. So that means I've got to go. Assalamu alaikum. Go forward, young Muslims, wherever you are. In the shadow of the sun or by the light of a star. Your supreme protector is almighty Allah. Go forward, young Muslims, wherever you are. Go forward, young Muslims, whoever you are. Press forward and forward to the light of Allah. And repeat and repeat, alhamdulillah. Go forward, young Muslims. Muslims, whoever you are.